Hello. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So it's, uh, whoops, let's start over again. It's Tuesday and it's Lovely Tiles Rule. Okay. So consider the following limit. The limit as, um, let's see, uh, x approaches 1 of x to the fourth minus 1 over x minus 1. Now you don't need Lovely Tiles Rule to do this one. So let me ask you, do you know how to do this one already? Is there any any idea you might have? You might want to start here, Ethan. Long division. long division, yeah. There's an easier way. What what's similar to long division? What's another idea like dividing? Simplifying meaning, factoring. Yeah, can't you factor this stuff? Which factoring is dividing? So let's factor the numerator, and you're going to find that you can do this limit by ordinary means. But then I'll show you what L'Hopital's rule does with this. Okay, can't you factor this? This is a difference of two squares, right? So what do you get? X squared minus 1, X squared plus 1. Okay. But that's still bad. Why is this bad, by the way? What if you plug in 1? Is it a plug-in limit? No, because if you plug in 1, you get 0 over 0. This is called the 0 over 0 case. And L'Hopital is great for 0 over 0. 0 over 0 is not undefined. 1 over 0, 2 over 0, 5 over 0, but 0 over 0 in the limit is indeterminate. It may be defined, all right? We're going to talk about that. It's still not defined here, right? Because if you plug in 1 here, you get 0 times whatever is 0. And you plug in 1 here, it's still 0. But what happens with this? You can factor further, right? And you get x minus 1 times x plus 1. Whoops. times x squared plus 1 over x minus 1. Now the x minus 1's cancel. And what happens when the, uh, the problem uh, factors out? What does the curve look like? Do you have a vertical asymptote? No, what do you have? You have a hole, right? Removable discontinuity. So that's what this is going to be. We're going to figure out how to plug in the hole. So this is over 1 now, isn't it? So can't you plug in 1 here? What do you get? 4. All right, this is what L'Hopital's rule says about this limit. Now, some of these limits you can't do any other way. You're going to need L'Hopital, and it's going to come in handy. So let's practice this up. Let's do the same limit. You ready? Moving on. Same limit. But now L'Hopital says, whoops, going to 1. If your limit is 0 over 0, or infinity over infinity, by the way, You will get an answer if you do the limit again, but you differentiate the top and the bottom separately before you take the limit. All right? So the, the limit of f over g is the limit of f prime over g prime. It's the limit of f double prime over g double prime if you have to keep on going. You can keep on going until you get an answer, or you might get undefined. That's an answer, too. Okay? All right, so what's the derivative of the top? 4x to the third, and the 1 gives you a derivative of 0, right? Over. What's the derivative of the bottom? 1. So is it a plug-in limit now? And you still get 4. Isn't that convenient? Okay? Now, this has a lot to do with local linearization. Take a look at this graph. I'm going to graph the numerator and the denominator separately and see how L'Hopital came up with this. L'Hopital was one of the first authors of a calculus textbook. Aren't you happy? Let's see. He started the whole, whoops, he started a whole fad of writing calculus textbooks. It's great. So let's graph this stuff. What if you take a look at the graph of x to the fourth minus 1 and x minus 1 separately? And I'm going to say, I don't know, zoom 4. But what I want to do is zoom in at x equals 1. All right, so here's x to the fourth minus 1, and here's x minus 1. And so let's, um, let's trace over to where x is 1, and then I'm going to zoom in there. Take a look at what happens. Zoom in. Now, this is already a line. But look what happens to this curve as you zoom in again. I think if you just hit enter, it zooms in again. No, maybe not. Okay. 
uh, F2, 2 at the same place. That's, that's x to the fourth minus 1. Does it look like a, like a curve or a line? If you blow it up, if closer and closer and closer to the point in question, what you get is called local linearization. Any continuous curve will eventually look like a line if you blow it up enough. Let's do it one more time. And what L'Hopital figured out is that these limits behave as the limit of the num as the uh, slope of the numerator as a line over the slope of the denominator as a line. Okay, what's the slope of this guy? Well, let's see. F5, uh, derivatives, dy dx, there. It's 4. All right. Uh, but what if I wanted to do the other derivative? Derivative 6, 1, go down arrow. Say I'm in line 1, that's the, the x to the 4th minus 1. Down arrow, get to line 2. Of course, that's a line, so the slope is mx plus b. It's 1, right? But let's see. There it is. So L'Hopital did a whole ton of questions like this and figured out when the limit exists, it's the derivative, of the, to the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. Then plug in what you need to plug in. So I'll try that again. What about this limit? What's the limit? Uh, as x approaches uh, 0 of sine x over x. Now remember, we figured this out using the sandwich theorem. We did convergence tables. We used this a lot to figure out the derivative of the sine and the cosine. This came up, this limit. So we needed to figure it out. This is, this is how you get it exactly. Now, what form is this? If you plug in 0, what do you get? 0 over 0. So that's L'Hopital form. All right, what does L'Hopital say? Take the derivative of the top. What is it? Cosine. And derivative of the bottom. What is it? 1, and now plug it back in, and if it changes from 0 over 0 to an answer or an undefined, that's it, you're done. So what is it? Plug in 0, what do you get? 1. Ta -da. Remember, we figured out this limit using convergence tables and sa sandwich theorem and all kinds of stuff, and we got 1. Okay, so that just confirms something we knew. Here's another one that came up a lot when we did derivatives of sines and cosines using the difference quotient, the, the definition of the derivative. The limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x minus 1 over x. What form is this? Is this 0 over 0 or something else? That's 0 over 0. Again, cosine of 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0 over 0 when you plug in 0. So the derivative of the top is what? OK, sine of x, derivative of the bottom. is uh, 1. Well, technically, the derivative of the cosine is negative of the sine, right? And if you plug in 0, what do you get? You get 0. It's defined. It's not 0 over 0. It's just 0 or 0 over 1. OK, so now we can handle some crazy limits. OK, let's see. How about this one? What's the limit? Any questions? Am I going too fast for anybody? Let me know. Slow me down by asking questions. OK, limit. As x approaches 0, of 3x minus sine x over x. What form is this if you plug in 0? 0 over 0. So what do you do? Derivative of the top is what? 3 minus, did I hear it? Cosine? OK. Over 1. And the cosine is 0? So you get 2. Ta-da. OK? All right, so let's just practice a bunch of crazy limits. How about the limit? As x approaches 0 of the square root of 1 plus x, outside the square root, there's a minus 1, all over x. All right, if we plug in 0, what form is this limit? The indeterminate form, 0 over 0, right. OK, so what's the derivative of the top? This is a 0 for the constant. This is to the 1 half, so what do you get? 1 half u to the negative 1 half over, the derivative of the bottom, 1. Now if you plug in 0, what do you get? Do you get an answer? 
Is it still zero, zero? Do you get an answer or is it undefined? Those are the options. If it's still zero, zero, differentiate again. What do you get? One half. This is, this is in the denominator, right? But it's one plus zero is one. In